Hey everyone, welcome to another deep dive with us. This time uh, we're going to be talking about open angle glaucoma treatment options. Uh, we know it can be a really, really tough decision to make. Yeah. And uh, and we really want to help you out. We want to make sure that you have all of the information you need uh, to make this decision, and hopefully, you know, feel good about talking to your doctor about it too. Absolutely. And I think a good place to start is just, you know, a little reminder about what open angle glaucoma is. Uh, you know, it's this condition where the pressure inside your eye builds up. And over time, that can actually start to damage your optic nerve. And the optic nerve is super important because that's what sends signals from your eye to your brain that let you see. And so the problem is the early symptoms can be really subtle. So it's often caught during just like a routine eye exam. Yeah. And if it's left untreated, it can lead to vision loss. And obviously, that's something that nobody wants. So we want to make sure that you have all the tools you need. So today, we're going to be diving into three main paths that you can take. Mm. Uh, and those are you know, doing nothing for now, using eye drops. And then also looking into a procedure called selective laser trabeculoplasty, or SLT for short. Yeah. And we're going to unpack kind of the, the benefits and the risks of each path. And we could do it by using, you know, real research-backed statistics. Exactly. You know, think of this like a crash course. You know, give you the information to ask good questions and make the best decision for your situation. Yeah, and speaking of doing nothing, uh, I know that might sound a little counterintuitive at first, but it is an option, especially for slow-progressing glaucoma. Yeah, you got it. It's really about a watchful waiting approach where you're closely monitored by your specialist and they're going to be looking at your risk factors. They're going to be tracking your eye pressure and they're going to be running tests to see how your optic nerd is doing. All to determine if you know holding off on immediate treatment is right for you. And with that wait and see strategy, we actually found some pretty interesting stats. We found that out of 100 people who initially chose to do nothing, about 40 needed to start using eye drops within three years. Right. And that brings us perfectly to our next option, which is eye drops. Right. Uh, these are often like the first line of defense. You know, they work to lower the eye pressure and slow down the progression of glaucoma. So what can someone expect if they do go down this route? What's the deal with eye drops? Well, you know, I like to think of it as a daily routine, just like brushing your teeth, but for your eyes. And there are different types that work in different ways to lower that pressure. Some drops will increase fluid outflow from your eye kind of like unclogging a drain. And others actually decrease fluid production, so there's less pressure buildup in the first place. So it's about finding the right type of drop for you. That works best with minimal side effects. Yeah. Because let's be real, no medication's perfect, right? Absolutely. You know, we did find that about 60 out of 100 people experience ongoing issues. Uh, things like redness or blurry vision or even changes in the appearance of their eye. Definitely something to consider. But even with those potential downsides, the stats on eye drops are pretty encouraging. Our research showed that out of 100 people using eye drops, only between 8 and 20 experienced some vision loss after three years. So that's a lot lower than the doing nothing group. Exactly. So while they do require that daily commitment, they can significantly reduce your risk of vision loss. So now let's shift gears and talk about an option that offers a potentially longer lasting control. And that is selective laser trabeculoplasty, or SLT. Okay, bring on the lasers. Tell us a little bit more about SLT. Well, it might sound intimidating, but it's actually a pretty quick outpatient procedure. It uses this focused laser energy to improve the fluid drainage in your eye, kind of like giving your eye's natural drainage system a tune-up. And the best part is the benefits can actually last for several years. So, you, you know, instead of a daily routine like eye drops, you might have this one procedure and be good to go for a while. At least that's the hope. Now, I know you're probably curious about success rates, so let's look at the numbers. Research tells us that about 50 out of 100 people who get SLT need another treatment within three to five years. Okay, so it's not always a one-and-done solution. But that does mean that half the people are good to go for even longer, not bad odds. But what about that other half? What are the factors that might make somebody more likely to need a repeat treatment? That is a great question, and honestly, it's one that researchers are still exploring. It could be the severity of their glaucoma, individual differences in how their eyes respond, even lifestyle factors. There's just a lot that we're still learning about this condition. Makes sense. Like a giant puzzle we're still putting together. Yeah. But uh, let's talk about risks. Is SLT a risky procedure? Good news on that front. Serious complications are very rare. We're talking about a 2% chance of experiencing issues that significantly impact vision or that need further treatment. And remember, this is a very precise laser procedure done by very skilled professionals. Okay, so there are always risks with any procedure, but those numbers do sound pretty reassuring. 
Could you walk us through the procedure itself? Like what actually happens during those 10 minutes? Sure. So first the doctor's going to numb your eye with some drops so you're comfortable. Then they'll use a special lens to focus the laser onto a specific part of your eye called the trabecular meshwork. You can think of it like a filter that helps to drain the fluid from your eye. Okay, so the laser is targeting this drainage filter. What exactly is it doing there? Well, the laser energy stimulates a natural healing process in this area, which ultimately helps to improve that fluid outflow and lower the eye pressure. So it's not about burning or cutting anything away. It's more like giving your eye's natural drainage system a little boost. So it's using your body's own healing. That's pretty cool. What about recovery? What can someone expect after SLT? Well, you might have some blurred vision for a few hours afterward, but most people bounce back pretty quickly. You might need to use some eye drops for a few days to help with any inflammation, but that's about it. So relatively painless and quick recovery. Sounds good to me. But we did mention that some people need a repeat treatment down the line. Is it the same procedure the second time around? It is the same procedure, but it is worth noting that it might not be as effective the second time. That's because the laser is targeting specific cells in that drainage system. And once they've been treated, there are fewer of them left to respond to the laser energy. Interesting. So it's a powerful tool, but it, it might not work the same for everybody every time. Okay, we've covered a lot here. We've compared doing nothing eye drops and SLT. Mm -hmm. But beyond just the numbers, what's the key takeaway for our listener? I think the most important thing to remember is that you are not a statistic. You know your individual journey with glaucoma is unique. And these numbers give you a general understanding. But the best decisions come from having an open and honest conversation with your doctor. Absolutely. It's about taking these statistics, mm -hmm. this information, and using it to have a truly personalized discussion you, with your eye specialist. Right. They'll be able to consider all of those unique factors that we've talked about. Your risk factors, your lifestyle, your comfort level with different treatments to help you create a plan that's really tailored for you. And on that note, I think we should shift gears in the final part of our deep dive and talk about how to make the most of that conversation with your doctor. What questions should you be asking? What points should you be raising? All right, welcome back to the final part of our deep dive on those open angle glaucoma treatment options. We've you know, really gone through the numbers, explored the pros and cons of each of those options. And now it's about you. You know, mm -hmm. taking this information and using it to have a really great conversation with your doctor. Right. It's about feeling empowered, not overwhelmed. Knowledge is power, especially when it comes to your health. Absolutely so. What are some questions our listeners should be ready to ask their eye specialist? Well, first and foremost, don't be shy about asking about your individual risk factors. What are the chances of your glaucoma progressing quickly? What should your target eye pressure be? Those are really important pieces of information that can shape your decision making. Yeah, because everybody's different. What works for one person might not work for another. And it's about, you know, really getting that personalized approach. So what about the pros and cons of each option? I mean, we talked about the general statistics, but how does that translate to your specific case? You know, don't hesitate to ask about potential side effects of the eye drops, both in the short term and long term. Are there certain types that might be a better fit for your lifestyle or, you know, other health conditions you might have? And when it comes to SLT, what are the chances that you would need a repeat procedure? How long might the effects last for you? All really good questions. Oh. Debbie. Yeah. It's important to remember, you're not just asking about the medical facts, but you're also asking about, you know, how these treatments will fit into your life. So if you struggle to remember taking daily medication, let them know. If you're nervous about the laser procedure, voice those concerns. Right. Your doctor needs to understand where you're coming from, both physically and emotionally. To be a true partner in this decision, you know this is a long-term commitment. So you want to choose a path that you feel good about and that you can realistically maintain. You know, it's not just about what the science says. It's about what feels right for you. And so hopefully with all this information in hand, you know you're ready to advocate for yourself. Yeah. And make a choice that feels good and aligns with your values. That's what we want you to walk away with. That sense of empowerment and confidence, you know, armed with these stats and insights and questions. You can really go into that appointment ready to have a productive conversation with your doctor. So as we wrap up this deep dive, here's a final thought. You know, knowing what you now know about the different options, the benefits, the risks, what matters most to you? What aspects of each option, you know, really resonate with your lifestyle, your comfort level? and your long-term outlook. Yeah, take some time to reflect on that call and there's no right or wrong answer. But you know, taking that time to think it through will help you walk that path with confidence, knowing that you made the best decision for yourself. 
And remember, you're not alone in this. Your doctor's there to guide you, and there are tons of resources and support groups out there. Well said. So on that note, we're going to wrap up this deep dive. We hope you feel you know, informed and empowered to navigate this next chapter in your health journey. Knowledge is power. And now you have the power 